Hello everyone, it's Connie here from Menudox and welcome back to a new video on the channel. In today's video, we are going to be starting the Discord.js v12 tutorials. They've been long awaited and I do apologize for the delay. Without further ado, let's get straight into them. So you'll notice right here, I've got the documentation open. We're going to head on over to their page because I need to show you something very important and I, I need it to be ironed into your brain that you are going to need Node.js 12. So to get this, what we're going to do is you're going to head on over to Node.js.org and you're going to click this button right here. It's going to download an MSI file. You're going to click on it. It's going to open it and it will pretty much ask you a couple questions. You want to add Node.js to path and then you want to pretty much mo most of the recommended settings are pretty much what you need here. Also, I've got another thing here that we're going to quickly talk about. I'm going to be having a linter setup. Um, I'm going to talk about a linter in a different video. It's probably going to be a separate video, one that isn't directly about the discord.js tutorials. Um, but Menudocs does have a, a, a modified ESLint rules. Uh, and we've called it Tesseract. Now you guys can download Tesseract. It's on the Node Package Manager or NPM and uh, you'll be able to pretty much use it from there. So without further ado, let's get straight into the videos. We're going to start off by pushing the left shift button and right clicking and you'll notice right here that you have the open PowerShell. If you normally click it, it won't be here. So we're going to do that again. We're going to open the PowerShell and we're going to start off the project by doing yarn in it. Hello viewers, it's Connor from the future of post-production. Whoa. Basically, I showed you how to install some packages using Yarn, but I didn't explain how to install Yarn. You just head on over to the Yarn package. I'll leave the uh, the link to this in the description of the video. Just head on over and click install Yarn and then just follow the processes from there. Anyways, back to the tutorial. So it's going to ask you several questions here. And we're just going to pretty much click through them apart from the entry point. We want to change the entry point to be source index. Now, the reason for this is we're going to move the entire bot code itself into the source folder to kind of break it up a little bit so it's not as confusing in the root. I'm going to continue to do so. I'm just going to pop my name in here. And now we are going to pretty much get a package.json here. So next, what we're going to do is we're just going to install our lint here. We're just going to copy and paste this. This should be all right. I'll quickly backspace here. Right click. And then we're going to click enter. And then this will add it as a dev dependency in yarn. All right. Now that all of that is added, we're going to yarn add discord.js. Pretty much installing what the fundamental package is that we need here. So now that that is installed, we can open the folder and you'll see that there is a couple things here. What we're going to do is we're just going to create a folder first off the bat. And then we're also just going to quickly open this folder. And actually, let's not do it in this folder. We'll open up our IDE and go from there. So before we forget anything, just read up here and you'll notice that we're going to need to make a JSON file and it's going to have a small little extend in it. So we're going to quickly make that. It's going to be dot eslintrc.json. And then inside here, we're going to have extends and then tesseract. And then that is the linter pretty much added here. Now we're going to go into the source folder and we're going to make the index.js accidentally clicked enter here by accident. So we're just going to quickly make this into a JS folder, uh, not folder. Sorry, we're going to make it into a file and then we're actually going to make a folder here and it's going to be called structures. Now what's going to be in the structures? The structures is going to contain the menu docs client .js. Now we're also going to need to make a config.json here because this is where we're going to store not only our prefix with the prefix of exclamation mark, but we're also going to store our token in here. Now you'll notice that yesterday I uploaded a couple videos. Uh, it's called Discord Bot Basics. Just head on over and you'll want to start off from the first episode there and probably up until maybe the second episode. It's basically going to go through how to create a bot application and then how to find a token and then also how to invite the bot to your Discord. So then you want to post the token in here. Don't try and use this token. I'm going to regen it after this video has been created. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to start off in the index.js. So as I said, we're going to start off with the index.js. Now we're going to do const menu docs client here equals require. And then inside this require, we're going to require the structures slash menu docs client. And you'll notice that the lint has started adding some, uh, some swiggly lines under here. Um, I've just ignore them unless um well until you're finished coding pretty much and then you'll go through and obviously change all these things next what we're going to do is const config equals require and we're going to require the config file we're going to you have to go back to here then we'll add a semicolon on the end there going to go down two lines const client 
equals and then we're going to do new menu docs client and inside here we're just going to pass config so the reason we can do this is because you're going to need to pass options in here and the options is going to be an object right you want to pass an object but because we are uh, requiring a json file and inside that json file we've got a object because json stands for javascript object notation we can just provide config as it is so we're going to go to the next line and do client dot login and that will finalize that with an empty space at the end and you'll notice that all the errors have pretty much disappeared because we've gone from not using this variable to using this variable adding semicolons and the correct spacing and such so now we're going to head on over to the menu docs client.js so this is going to be quite a mouthful so do prepare yourself so we're going to start off by requiring the discord.js package here and now we're going to do module.exports equals and we're just going to do class menu docs client extends uh the extends the client from the discord.js package and now what we're going to do is go down two lines and we'll create a constructor and inside that constructor is going to be options and then it's going to be if options aren't passed we're going to say options equals just an empty object now we're going to open up some parameters here and then we're going to do the super inside the super we're going to have the disable mentions and we're just gonna say everyone uh, outside of this we can do this dot validate and now this dot validate is going to be pretty much a function we're gonna make just below so stay tuned for that now we're gonna start off with the uh, ready event the ready event is very important because it will tell you when your bot has finally connected to the WebSocket here and the reason we're using once instead of one is once is definitely going to be once the bot is ready for you so we're just going to pass an empty arrow function here, zero parameters, and we're just going to quickly console log, and we're just going to say something along the lines of logged in as, and then we'll just do potentially just, we'll just do this.user.username. We'll add a exclamation mark because we're feeling groovy today, and then we'll add another semicolon here. Now we're going to head on over to the message event. It's this dot on. What am I doing? I'm in my, my own world today. Uh, and then we're going to async. We're going to pass message as a parameter here. Arrow function, open curly braces. Now this is going to be a good chunk of code here. And we're also going to use a little bit of uh, disabling of ESLint rules. We start off with some regex. So const mention regex equals regxp. And now bear with me make sure you copy it exactly up arrow side arrow at exclamation mark and then we're going to add a dollar sign and we're going to say this dot user dot id outside of this we're going to say right arrow and then a dollar sign and then we're going to do so and i add a space we're going to remove the uh dollar sign there and we're also going to change this to be prefix. Now you'll notice that I'm ignoring all these uh, indenting issues at this moment because we can just fix them all at once. I believe we have to install the ESLint uh, extension for Visual Studio Code. Now if we go down two lines, we're going to simply do message.guild and we're going to ignore any messages that aren't inside a guild or, sorry, we're going to ignore any messages that are from a bot. We're going to return said it happens to come back true saying it isn't in a guild. Or it is a bot we're just going to return we're going to go down two lines and then we're going to say if the message.content does happen to match message uh sorry mention regex what we're going to do is we're going to send a message here message.channel.send i'm going to say my prefix for and we're just going to simply input the guild here uh, message.guild.name and then after this is and now we're going to be able to use this dot prefix because we pass prefix as an option. Probably, we should probably like embed that using some markdown. So you're going to have to escape the back ticks here. And we add a full stop at the end. And another semicolon. We go down, let's go down two lines. And then we're going to const prefix equals. Now we're going to use a ternary operator. You guys don't know what a ternary operator is. Probably best to explain it. I'll, I'll, what I'll go through is I'll write the entire ternary operator. Then I'll explain it to you. So we're gonna match it, right? So we're gonna match it to the prefix at the question mark there. We're gonna go into message.content.match. It's pretty much the same thing here. Um, but instead of that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a zero at the end here and do this.prefix as the fullback, adding a semicolon, remove the unneeded space here. So what is a ternary operator? Let's, for instance, let's just make a quick comment, right? 
So we're going to say condition, which is this first part. And then we're going to simply just do true and false. Okay. So if this condition is true, it returns true. It's going to go into this first part here. Therefore, if the uh, message content is the bot's name, it's going to return this part here, which is which is saying that the prefix is the mention of the bot. Now, if it doesn't contain the mention of the bot, it's going to be false, right? Which is going to default to our normal prefix, which we have in our config file. And then that's pretty much it. Like you can Google it if you don't understand it, how I explained it, that's fine. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to say command is the first argument in the array. And then the rest, it's just going to be R. Next, we're going to do message dot content dot slice and we're just going to slice the prefix here the prefix length then we add trim and then we are going to add split and now we're going to do the it's a little bit more regex here adding the global identifier at the end so we're actually going to add an eslint rule up here above it add a comment super quickly and we're just going to say eslint dash disable dash next dash line no dash unused bars. Now we're adding this because args isn't going to be used for probably a couple episodes here because we're going to put the messages, uh, sorry, the commands that we're going to do aren't going to require args to be really documented or used. So we're just going to put that there. Now what we're going to do is if, it's probably best we add the spaces here. We're going to do if command dot two lowercase, yeah, two lowercase equals hello, we will well and truly send a message here saying hello and that is that that is pretty much it so since we're here i'll just show you that you can go in here and just fix all indentation issues here and it will fix that i should have used the single quotes we have it set to use single quotes with tesseract now what is next we're going to make the validate function right so let's go and make the validate function and we're going to pass in the options what's going to be in here so we're going to do if type of options doesn't equal object we're going to return an issue no we're going to throw sorry we're going to throw new type error i'm going to throw a type error here and we're going to say options should be a type of object and then we're going to go down two lines we'll say type of no, actually, we're gonna. Well, this is gonna be to check if the options has a token in it. So if it doesn't have a token in it, we're gonna throw an error saying you must pass the token for the client. Add a semicolon. Ah, oh, I've forgotten me semicolon up here. Now, what is next? We're gonna say this dot token equals options dot token assigning token to this dot token and then we're going to go down two lines and this is the final part we could probably get yeah okay never mind let's not copy that part we'll just do this dot and then we'll check the prefix right so options dot prefix and we're going to say throw new error it's going to say you must pass a prefix for the client i'm going to add a semicolon quickly and then we're going to say if and this is going to check the type we're going to check if the type of options dot prefix is a string pretty much I'm gonna say string and if it isn't we'll just uh, throw a new type error and this type error is gonna say prefix should be a type of string this dot prefix equals options dot prefix and then that is the validate function we'll quickly make the login so the async login I'm gonna pass the token equals this dot token so pretty much you could probably inside the index not probably definitely you can provide the uh, token but we're just gonna say here this dot token is the token i'm gonna go here and say super dot login and then we're just gonna say token right let's quickly fix up these issues pixel indent issues what's this one no trailing spaces fix this trailing space and then no semicolon here let's fix that semicolon and that is this file done now we're going to quickly jump over into discord to show you that this does work what is this issue um oh yeah, no space at the space right so whilst we're here i'm just going to show you how to run the bot and because we have 
the entry point in our package.json here, right here, we're just going to be able to run no dot, no dot, and then it will pretty much run the bot here. You'll notice that the ready event will fire. Now I'm going to drag up Discord and you'll notice that I have run a few commands today, but it's going to be pretty much the same here. Be able to run the bot. It will tell me what the prefix is if I mention it. We'll also be able to mention the bot and do hello as well as being able to do hello. So that is the bot done for today. I hope everyone has enjoyed the video and I look forward to bringing the continued V12 tutorials. I wanna thank everyone in the Menudocs Projects Discord for helping put these tutorials together, uh, especially Anish and uh, Creventa. Thank you guys so much and I'll uh, catch you guys in episode number two of the Discord.V12 tutorials that will be coming out fortnightly. So stay tuned for that.